So I walk into the Koo Kingdom the other day, and I order 15 bean burritos. And they looked at me like I was crazy. And I was like, what's the matter? Do you not have bean burritos? And they went, well, you walked through the valley of bean burrito stocks. They're free for everyone. Don't know why you thought your money would be good here. So I went out and I found the stocks and I carefully trimmed the leaves away, found some nice, delicious bean burritos, and I chowed down. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you. You deserve to live in a society <laughs> where money is not a hindrance to your obtaining and devouring 15, 15 bean, bean burritos. burritos. Nova, do not chew on the cord to the mixer. I will eat you. I don't think she chews cords, but we'll see. When she laid down, she put her mouth on it, but I think that was just because it was in her way. Oh, okay. Gosh, dogs are fun, aren't they? They are, yeah. Imagine trying to explain money to an alien race that had never heard of it. Hmm. So we've got these pieces of paper <laughs> and I give the piece of paper and I get things. And then the person has the piece of paper and they can give the piece of paper to somebody else for something. Yeah. And then they're like, where's the piece of paper come from? And then you're like, OK, so do you have a government? And they go, a, a what? And you're like, oh, <laughs> OK, so a, a bunch of people got together and they decided that there were certain rules that everyone should follow. And if you didn't follow the rules, then they're allowed to physically harm you or fine you to take the paper from you <laughs> and what happens if you don't give them your paper well then you go to a place called jail what's jail <laughs> it's like a house but not fun and you're not allowed to leave <laughs> <laughs> but some people make money off of having uh the maximum number of people in their house that is designated as a jail so sometimes they're eager to lock people up so they pay more money to the people who go around seeing if people break rules and those people can sometimes be flexible as to whether or not a rule is broken and they go to places where there's people with less money because people with less money have the have lowered ability to fight the charges brought against them and that's the industry, the the military industrial complex. No, it's a different one. Prison. The, pri, well, the, what is it called? Privatized prison. There's a name for it. Yeah. So what you're saying here, <laughs> what you're saying here is, if you have paper, someone else wants it, and you don't give it to them, you go to a box, and other people get paper for you being in the box. Yes. But absolutely. you don't get the paper to give to the original people. No. And if you've gone to this box, you're not allowed to vote in most states, which actually means that you have no ability to reform the society that you live in, which causes a lot of people to be burnt out. Man, that's insane. I'm glad we decided on laser bombardment. <laughs> But first, we're going to take all of your bean burritos. No! That's been your mic test. I was going to ask something about a triathlon, but we went in a completely different direction. My name is Kat. Oh, and I've just got, I've got this neat little hat here. What's that a reference to? The chick girl. Sure. Sh oh. She had a hat. Sh sh Shurfy or whatever. Surfy. <laughs> Surfy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me try again. Mic test time and we are not going to talk about uh, communism or uh, money or finances or crazy theories or books that we've been reading. I have a mic test question. Okay. Doki Doki Girls Superlatives in the Yearbook. <laughs> isn't this isn't this kind of approaching our end of season uh awards a little bit yeah okay mana is most likely to succeed maybe rika is most likely to succeed mana is most likely to sacrifice herself so someone else can succeed okay most or er, most uh happiest person okay sure yeah 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 yeah, yeah. alice is um hmm most likely to avenge her dead parents. I'm sorry, that's the only one I can come up with that's kind of lame. Most likely to be a secret superhero. <laughs> yeah. Most likely to uh, cure cancer via mountains and mountains of money. Okay, okay. <laughs> Makoto is most likely to die alone. Aw. Yeah, I can see it. She's I just very it. frigid. Mm, yeah. Most likely to own, like, 30 cats. Okay, yeah. There you go. That's better. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Natalie, most likely to uh, whip you into shape. Like a boot camp sort of sergeant person. Okay. Yeah. 
And cool. That's, that's, that's been your mic, mic test. test. We didn't talk about communism or finances <laughs> or, or books we've been reading. Hello and welcome to Sound Test Part 2. Sound Test Part 2? That's so exciting. Revenge of the Fallen. <laughs> Uh, something I realized is that the hotel AC is on behind you, and your mic might pick that up. So if Hopefully the... silence takes that out. Yeah. So that's, that's why we have the mic test to begin with. Absolutely. All right. Now, if you were going to do a series with different houses with different attributes for the people in those houses, like a certain young author series that I refuse to acknowledge exists, for the Delicious Party Girls... What traits would be part of the different houses? Okay, so uh, curious and energetic would be Rand's house. Okay. Calm and well-mannered would be Kokone's. Okay. So then what's Amane's? Amane's is the leadership house. Oh, okay. The default good guys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then courage and kindness. Uh, enthusiasm or kindness. Oh, enthusiasm. Be, okay. Yes. I, I think that Ran and Yui are both enthusiastic, but I think if I were to make a house Ran or a house Mem Mem or a house Noodle, I think I would put the energetic one, the most energetic ones into that house, and then I would put the like kind and compassionate ones into Yui's house. That's great. You've also given me a great idea for a discussion question for this week's episode. So. Ooh, very exciting. Good do. That's been your mic test. That's been your mic test. I actually, on a unrelated note, I had a discussion question for last week, and then we didn't go with it, and then this week I was going to do it again, but now you have another one. But I'm keeping it in the back of my mind. I'm tucking it away. I'm saving it for a later date. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. It happens. House noodle for the win. House noodle, house parfait, house rice, and house bread. Hello, and welcome to the mic test. Is the mic actually testing? Yeah, it's actually working this time. Incredible, right? There you go. Catherine, you are very excited about home decoration and uh, furniture and whatnot. So what? If, which of the pre-cured girls, of the Delicious Party girls, would you want to help you remodel your house? Ran Ran. Yeah. I get the impression she has really good taste, and I think it would be really eclectic. Like, Kakone seems like she'd go very stark and minimalist, which I like. I'm actually drawn to the cold, minimalist look, but I'm trying to move away from that and push my, my boundaries a little bit. And I just think Ran would bring in a lot of color. Yui, I think, would have that toddler grandma energy where nothing would look quite right. It would just be like random stuff thrown together with okay. no cohesive color palette. My kind of girl. Yeah, exactly. And then um, I think Amane would just be too, like, you have to follow the rules. So I've been watching a YouTuber called Paige Wassel, and something she says a lot is you don't want everything to be mid-century, right? Or you don't want everything to be rustic. You don't want everything to be boho. You should have like kind of a mix and match thing going on. Otherwise, there's no visual interest. And so I think Amane would be too, okay, you wanted a mid-century couch, so everything is mid-century. What is boho? Boho these nuts? <laughs> like <laughs> No, boho is like... You know those girls who go to festivals and have, like, feathers in their hair? Okay. Think about how one of them might decorate their house. That's boho. Okay. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna Google it or something because I'm just, I'm not picturing, I'm just picturing feathers hanging from the ceiling by string or something like that. You know, like, sure. like, it's very, like, oh, look at me, I'm a free spirit. Woo! Okay, so is it, like, live, laugh, love type stuff? Kind of? Okay, so do you know why it's called boho? Is that... Oh, I have no idea. I think it's short for bohemian. Okay. What does boho even mean? What boho style means? What is called boho? Why is it called boho? Oh, I see. Kind of like wick furniture and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But anyways, I think that's been your mic test. Unless you have some interesting um, home designer tips that you'd like to share with our audience. Stuff with ghosts in it. Gives your home character. Buy old furniture. Interesting. Hello. Hello. This is a Joel specific mic test because I sounded echoey in the last one. Mic test number three. This time we're going to jiggle some chords. We're going to see what happens. There once was a man named Gold Roger. He had fame, wealth, and some other things. 
Now let's do a combined mic test where I speak into my mic and Catherine speaks into hers. Hello, I'm Catherine. I'm speaking into my mic. Our current hypothesis is that when we listen back to this one, I will sound normal. And I will sound odd. There's a scene where Yui has been tied up because due to, you know, freaky, or parent swap, parent trap. Are you having a time? (laughs) Welcome to the mic test. It's Newsday Tuesday. Catherine, do you have a bit of news for me? I do have some news for you, Joel. Excellent. What is it? U.S. President Joe Biden may be beating the shit out of teenagers in a Guilty Girl gear tournament. Interesting. So he's not going out just finding teenagers at Hot Topic and just punching him over and over again. That much is unclear. (laughs) U.S. President Joe Biden has been known to throw hands. I think now that he's achieved presidency, the highest office in the land of Amer- in the United States, I think that he could throw the first punch, and then when they're retaliated against him, he just taps out and has the Secret Service handle the teenagers. That's brilliant! I'm going to become president! <laughs> Do you have any idea how many people I would punch and then let the Secret Service beat up for me? Yeah, absolutely. I think now that you've said that, though, you can no longer become president. Ah, oh, beans! It's, I mean, it's, it's like the wizard president where, like, a goat has to say that, like, you have a pure heart, and, like, now that you've said that, the goat will know. No, hey, goat, no! Goat, go left! I should say it's a magic goat, you know, in case that isn't clear. That's pretty obvious. Yeah, I mean, it's if it's the, if it How chooses the wizard... Heart? Yeah. <laughs> no, regular goats can do that, too. <laughs> um, this episode is way behind schedule, so I think that's going to be your mic test. Enjoy those goat sounds. Newsday Tuesday. That's right, folks. We're back at it again with a second installment of Newsday Tuesday. Okay, so like the unfortunate thing is I realized it's Saturday. Uh, due to scheduling conflicts, Newsday Tuesday is no longer always on Tuesday. That's fair. Yeah. Our corporate overlords decided that they wanted a Blues Day Tuesday where they talked about like impactful soulful music and so newsday just get got moved what Plus, a, when are we gonna have woos day well i i don't know woos day wednesday sound has some pretty good alliteration there yeah i'm vibing with that uh also i realized that the news doesn't only just happen on a tuesday you know sometimes things happen on a thursday you're telling me things happen on thursdays what are you get out what kind of journalist are you <laughs> Uh, not much of one. I'm just a dude with a podcast. Anyways, fun peek behind the curtains. Uh, it seems that our mixer is being very naughty, so that's why we're recording a second uh, episode, or a second... That's a nice way of saying slowly shitting the bed. I... <laughs> that's been your second mic test. <laughs> Welcome back to the third installment of Newsday Tuesday. I am trapped in hell, apparently. <laughs> just like, living the same rolling bit over and over. Joel? Here's what happened. We are stuck in a Groundhog's Day loop where we are expected to deliver one bit of news. And in the first Newsday Tuesday segment, we delivered stuff about Joe Biden. And then and we also went into the wizarding world of wizards. And then in the second one, we announced that Newsday Tuesday is not only on Tuesday. I think what's happening is some capricious god is keeping us here until we deliver the exact bit of news that we are supposed to deliver. So I have the most fantastic news that has never occurred to anyone ever. I'm ready. Precure is pretty good. I like it a lot. People should watch it. That's breaking. I hope that this is our last mic test. There once was a Let man. Let me know when named you're done Gold adjusting your butt. Roger. My butt will never you, be finished adjusting. You're not allowed to have Diet Coke during recording. I'm tired. I'm a sleepy boy. I'll smack you with a fish. I'm a sleepy wake chinchilla up. given human form. A sleepy. Okay. 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 <laughs> what was that? Were you like loading your next response? No, listen. You know how sometimes some of our friends, if you say part of a thing, they'll compulsively recite the whole thing, like song lyrics or whatever? And when you say some of our friends, you mean you. You? I do it as well, yeah. I I was thinking of a friend from college, actually, but whenever I hear the word chinchilla, I compulsively want to recite a poem that somebody wrote in my yearbook in, like, middle school. Was it graphic? No. Okay, the way you hesitate there makes me think that something was put in someone's butt in the poem. No, it wasn't. Oh, okay. I just, do you want to hear the poem? Because I've had it memorized since middle school. It's just taken up space in my brain cavity. Go ahead. <clears throat> the chinchilla died, and then it fried. I ground it into meat. I took a bite. What a delight. Chinchilla makes a treat. <laughs> she wrote this. 
in the yearbook of the one friend we had who actually owned a chinchilla. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I don't know why she did this. Middle schoolers are weird. They're they're messed up little creatures. They're LOL so random. Absolutely. <laughs> anyway, that's a secret bonus mic test. Did we get our silence? Yeah, of course we did. We get it for the mic test. Awesome. For a while, I was worried that I liked it. The like I liked it so. Re- <sighs> Hello, and welcome to Actual Newsday Tuesday. It is Tuesday! Catherine, what news do you have to share with us today? Today, Gigi saw a squirrel on a walk. Wow, that's really important news. Okay. How did, how did she react? She stared real hard at the squirrel. I oh. think she was trying to test if she had developed her latent mutant powers yet and if she could explode the squirrel with her mind, but it didn't work. It would take less effort to explode a squirrel with your mind and, than to try to chase it. They're always running up t- uh, uh, stairs. Trees? They're always running up trees to trees? get out of... What are trees but nature's stairs? Yeah, that's a good point. That's a great point. Or are boulders nature's stairs? Are trees nature's ladder? Ladders are often made of trees. <laughs> and trees can sometimes be made of ladders. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I think nature's stairs are mountains. So, you know, you just got to keep going up and up and up and up. And then yeah. you get to the top and you achieve your dreams. That's a mood. Anybody can do anything. Absolutely. That's been your mic test. We're feeling a little loopy, so that's all for today, folks. There were like these little drunk drunk uh But it's the Yotsuba Funsen! Fusen! <laughs> Absolutely. Oh man, I messed it up. I'm gonna do it again. Hello and welcome to the mic test. Testing the mic, you, me, the mics. Yes, we're now, here. Now, Catherine, you you know the popular game show Challenge of Three, which is where contestants uh, in pairs uh, have to complete three challenges, and for each challenge they successfully complete, they can earn uh, an amount of money. But if they go on to press their luck, they'll earn even more money at the next challenge. But if they lose the next challenge, they lose all of the money they've saved up. Absolutely. I'm very familiar with this family favorite game show. Yes. And the the the, the competitions are unknown. You know, they've had uh, karaoke, they've had scavenger hunts, they've had sporting events, they've had one that was uh, about math, like they had to solve the integral, you know, from zero to four of uh, e to the x and so uh if you were to pick one of the doki doki girls to serve as your partner in this three unknown challenges situation who would you pick i feel like mana is an almost good all-around helper but like I I can't trust her math skills, and I can't trust my math skills. Mm. So she's out. Makoto is secretly a little dumb, I think. Like, she doesn't know Earth math. She's unfamiliar with our customs, yes. So it would have to be either Alice or Rika. I think Alice would try to be like, It could also be Augury. Oh, yeah. I think Alice would try to be like, Sebastian, use my money, please. And then they'd be like, that's cheating, ma'am. And she'd be like, oh, no. So I'm going to go with Rika. (laughs) Okay, I like that. Rika is smart. She's capable. She knows how to be a support unit rather than trying to be like the main show. Mm, okay, yeah, I can get behind that. Now, my thinking is that Augury would come across as confident and like I know everything, but she's just, you know, she's overconfident in her abilities. Uh, I think that Mana would be good for moral support, honestly. Like, if there was ever a challenge that I didn't think that I could do, she'd be able to back me up. So I think she's a strong contender. And I would probably have Makoto be my, like, fill in, my second choice. See, you can do math, so... I I compensate for Mana's weakness. Exactly. Mana fills in that hole for you. But Mana and I would say... Our strengths are the same. Mm, Okay, yeah, that that makes absolute sense. Okay, that's my test. test. What about a pre-cure season where they're cosplayers? And I I love it. May I present to you, not Doki Doki, the other one. Uh, Hard Catch. No. Happiness Charge. Hello and welcome to the mic test. Oh yeah, we do those before we record. We do, absolutely. So we watched four episodes and I'm going to do something slightly different. Uh, I recast each of the episodes that we watched 
as a different genre or a different TV show or a different reference of some sort. So I'll just kind of fire them off and you can respond. Oh, okay. do you want me to guess what the TV show or the genre is? Or are you going to tell me and just read them? Uh, yeah, I was just going to kind of read the summaries that I wrote down. I didn't okay, think of it fine. as a game. Delicious 35 as an idol episode. Their album sales are at an all-time high, but Kakone may uh, or has to move before their uh, next big concert that will put them on the international stage. Just as they're about to start singing the finale song without her, she rushes back on stage and sings her heart out. During this final song, she and Amane have a duet in the middle where the other girls are all quiet, and that just adds more feel to the shipping fodder. That's extremely love live of them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I don't think Precure could have... like. If you took all of the pre-cure from all of the seasons, you would have enough girls for one and a half seasons of Love Live, I think. I believe that's how many characters are in that show. Yeah, because Love Live was a gotcha game originally, right? It might have been, yeah. You would know the the history slightly better than I would. (laughs) Delicious 36 as a Duel Monsters episode. The episode starts with Ran victorious in a duel against some random opponent, showcasing how far her skills with her Duel Panda dragon-themed deck have come. But then she hears news that a top-tier duelist is going to be coming through town, and she wonders if she could ever match the skill of this other uh, uh, duelist. I almost called her a trainer because I've been playing Pokemon, but she, she wonders if she can match this other duelist skill, if she'll ever be as good as this professional. And uh, they actually have a conversation where she explains how nervous she is, and the champion explains... Champion, I did it again. The duelist explains that uh, she actually used to be an amateur as well, and she worked her way up, so Ran could too. In a in a show of friendship, she gives Ran a card called Panda Friendship, and then the villains attack at a time when Tatamoto, I think is her name, is indisposed, so Ran has to duel the villain, and uh, she uses Panda Friendship to win the game, thus proving her capable of the of the skill ceiling she was worried about. All right. Okay. I like that one. I'm pretty sure that, like, Yugi becomes the dual champion. He I does. I think champion is an He's okay. He's king of the games. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. Champion of the tournament or whatever. Can he really be king of games if, if he didn't win all games he only won a game he's king of that well he's he's also the king of uh dungeon dice monsters if you'll remember (laughs) correctly which is a completely different game than uh Yu-Gi-Oh. but in the uh manga he challenges people to all sorts of different games like i think he kills someone via chess at one point and that sort of thing okay Doki Doki 39 as a spy thriller. The episode opens up with the villains discussing a weapon of potential global destruction, but it seems it's encoded only to accept the fingerprint scans of members of the Doki Doki spy agency. The agency itself is visited by Commander Joe, who has been MIA for some time on a secret mission to protect the asset, aka Princess Anne. However, this isn't actually Commander Joe, but rather Belle using a disguise, like the the, uh, Mission Impossible masks or the MCU uh, masks. Uh, it looks as though the Doki Doki agents are ready to blow up the enemy base. They actually knew that this was a, a secret agent and they let him lead them to the base. Uh, but then uh, their super secret spy, the most powerful and talented spy among the uh, mercenary uh, spy agency, Regina, shows up. And she is able to override the fingerprint scan on the weapon through sheer determination and brute force. And she ends up with the weapon and the other agents have to retreat. I like this one a lot. Yeah. This is a good one. Yeah. I can imagine Makoto and Alice rocking uh, uh, spy suits, you know, uh, tuxedos and that sort of a thing. Yes. Makoto and Davi in matching suits. Yes, absolutely. Doki Doki 40, but as a sports anime. Regina, four star... Or former, not f- former star player of the Yotsuba Zebras has transferred to a rival school just before the national competition, the latest game before the upperclassmen graduate. Oh no, we want them to win because they're going to graduate soon and this is the last game they'll ever play. Sad. Uh, Augury is determined to win and she just wants to, she wants the other girls to forget about their former friend Regina who betrayed them by going to a rival school. Mana, team captain, believes in Regina and wants the two teams to compete with all their hearts and have a have a great match. The team helps Makoto write a rousing cheer that they sang during halftime, and as they perform it, Regina's dislike for their former for her former teammates begin to soften. That's cute. That's really <laughs> cute. Man, fanfic is fun. Fanfic is great. <laughs> Do you have anything else that you want to add? 
I I was really wondering how you were going to do the Makoto song episode. And I think you I think you hit it. I think you did a good job. Well, thank you very much. And that's been your mic test. Hello, and welcome to a solo mic test. Uh, Usually when there's two of us, what we do is we talk back and forth. But if it's just me, I guess I can vamp about just about anything that I want. I have unlimited power. Mwahahaha. Uh, what have we been up to lately? Oh, uh, we've watched Sandman, the first season. I missed a couple of episodes here and there, but Kat was watching it. And, uh, I really like Dream, and I can't wait to meet the other members of the family. Uh, I'm a big fan of the idea of Destiny, so even though I don't know anything about the character from the comic books, uh, I hope that they are an entertaining character in one way, shape, or form, and I do not like Desire. Maybe it'll turn out that they're a better person than they seem, but right now it seems like they're kind of just mean to Dream because jealousy, I guess. Uh, we've also started Bochi the Rock. Bochi the Rock is quite good. I like all of the characters there, uh, but we've only gotten far enough for them to basically form the band, and so they haven't done a lot of group activities. So I look forward to seeing how they grow uh, as a team and as characters and all that other good stuff. And then uh, we watched one episode of Wednesday. Um, I think I'll watch more episodes, but that's just we only watched one before it was time to record. And uh, I think that for the right type of vibe, I think this is the exact show for the for that vibe. What do I mean by that? Uh, it can feel a little try hard, like it's a show that is trying very hard to be as as goth and edgy as possible in the character of Wednesday. But at the same time, if that's what you're after, I think that this is exactly what you're looking for. It wasn't quite Kat's favorite thing, and I don't think it was quite my favorite thing either. But I've heard several YouTubers talk about that it's overall pretty good, and so yeah. It's only eight episodes. I'll watch the other seven, you know, at some point. And uh, that's basically it. That's been your mic test. This is the second mic test. Doesn't have to be as long as the first mic test because we already did a first mic test. This is just to make sure that the squiggles are wiggling. Oh, yeah. It's time to the squiggle and the wiggle and the wiggle is the squiggle. Oh, yeah. This is the second mic test. Doesn't have to be as long as the first mic test because we already did a first mic test. This is just to make sure that the squiggles are wiggling. Oh yeah, it's time to the squiggle and the wiggle and the wiggle is the squiggle. Oh yeah. Welcome to the mic test, and I have been told that my co-host wishes to sing a song about me, and uh, while I am anxious and worried, I shall allow this to happen. <laughs> you were making a very concerned face during the silence. <clears throat> There once was a man named Joel, and he sat on the Chunkus throne. He played Minecraft all day, where he dug for Chunkus gold. He dug for gold or so, I'm told, until one fateful day. A Chunkus creeper blew him up, and they took his gold away. Oh, Chunkus Joel, Chunkus Joel, king of the Chunkus land. He wants to play some Minecraft, but will you give him a hand? Chunkus Joel, Chunkus Joel, his heart is full of please. I don't have an end to the song. Doop 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 d. Yay! <laughs> now, if I were to refer to one of our animals as a chunkus, it would be because that animal was fat. So, are you trying to tell me to make uh, weight loss a goal, a New Year's resolution? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I just thought it was funny. Mm. Do you want? Do you want to know the inciting like imagining that I had that led to this song popping into my head? Please. Okay. I was imagining us getting up tomorrow morning before work and me being like, hey, you ready to go for your ru- your run? And you being like, no, I don't I don't really feel like running today. And then I imagine saying to you, do you want to skip the run and be a chunkus? And then that just turned into this song. I see. OK. And do we have. A- OK, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Anyway, I, I shall have to think of a song that is appropriate for you, my lovely lady, for the next time that we record an episode of this podcast. Yes. Uh, also, shout out to my favorite Christmas song, Joel the Lump of Coal. Of course. Absolutely. <laughs> still haven't heard that song, I don't think. I still don't think that I've gone through and listened to it, even though you sang it every year in honor of your husband. So. Uh, shout out, honorable mention to the best line, Santa laughed, Joel, you stupid lump. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds like something Santa would say to me if I were working for him. Is that the, is, is that the or is he being visited on Christmas? No, the lump of coal works for Santa, sort of. <laughs> I want to be clear. 
I'm not fat shaming my husband. I love his body. And I love all of your bodies. Everyone is beautiful. Absolutely. I just like the word chunkus. <laughs> and this has been your mic test. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the mic test. Mic test, mic test, gonna test the mic. Mic test, mic test, let's have a fight. Mic test, mic test, I'll kick your butt. Mic test, mic test, what rhymes with butt? Boop, boop, hoop. Cure of the what? Jut. Strut. <laughs> Ooh, I like strut. What? Okay. So we, you and I have recently watched Bochi the Rock. We finished uh, the f- first season, and then we rewatched some of the episodes during our watch together. So of the Doki Doki girls, do you think any of them clearly map onto the Bochi characters? Amane for blonde ponytail girl. Yes, I too love the Doki Doki character Amane as um, Ijika. You said I said Doki Doki. Doki. I did say Doki Doki. You because said we Doki Doki. We're not covering I... Delicious Party this week, so I figured we could stick to the Doki Doki girls. You know what's interesting is when you talk, <laughs> you don't I definitely anything. listen to you. <laughs> but you know, sometimes the words just change hmm. it, once they get into my brain before my mouth comes up with this response. Okay, Doki Doki girls, Bochi. The Hrock. What about Alice for Kita? Alice Kita as the kind of the one with the Keat aura. Okay, I really like that. I could also see Makoto because she just kind of has that sort of... See, I think well, Makoto maps to Rio a little better. <laughs> yes, I like that. I like that a lot. I really like Rika as Bochi. Like, Rika just having this, like, hard time interacting with other people. She's really good at what she does, the poem, whatever, and she uploads, like, her own poetry to YouTube, but she just has a hard time interacting with other people. Yes, absolutely. Just just going back to Makoto as Rio for a second, can't you just see her being like, it's another day of eating grass for me? <laughs> <laughs> and Mon is like, no, please don't eat grass. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Augury could also be a bochi type. She doesn't seem extremely comfortable with everyone else. I like that, but I also like Augury because she's younger as the little sister. Like, I know she's not one of the main characters, but she absolutely could. <gasps> and Joe could be the freaking manager at the Starry Bar or whatever. There <laughs> you the go. Princess is the goth girl who's like her girlfriend or whatever. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah, Bochi's a really good series. If you are listening to this and you haven't watched Bochi the Rock, please do. Mother's Basement did an excellent video kind of analyzing what makes the show so great, and there were a lot of details in there that I didn't quite realize myself, but I think the biggest thing that I could say is that Bochi is the type of character who kind of imagines bizarre situations and one of my favorite scenes in the entire series is one in which other characters get roped into her imaginary world and it just shows how their uh, bonds are kind of like forming and if you watch Precure there's a good chance you like cute girls Bochi the Rock has plenty of cute girls Bochi the Rock was very cute can confirm all right and that's been your mic test <laughs> That's, I know every time you put together a compilation, you like to have a sound to go in between them. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I've, okay. I've Absolutely. provided Thank you, you for providing sound. that. Yes, yes. <clears throat> yes, yes, very good. Yes. Hello, and welcome to the mic test. Mic test time! Joel, I actually have one this week, <gasps> if you if you don't have anything in mind. Mic test time? Mic test time, yeah. Mic test time. <laughs> oh, God, my co-host has been replaced by a tiny goblin who can only say mic test time. Oh, oh. <laughs> Salty potatoes! Oh, he can say another thing! He's learning! All right, all right. Thank you. Welcome back, Joel. Here's my question for you. What food would be the most egregious to replace with some sort of bizarre cauliflower substitute? This is a delicious party. It's a podcast. Okay, so it's about, yeah, it's a little bit about food. Okay, so... I mean, the one that would offend me the most is replacing, like, a dessert. Like, could you imagine if someone's like, it's a delicious cherry pie, but... I mean, I know you don't like cherries, but, like, it's a delicious cherry pie, but it's cauliflower instead of cherries. so angry. As soon as you said that, I was like... (laughs) What if someone like ice cream cake, but uh, (laughs) cauliflower is gonna be ice cream? What if someone pureed cauliflower and mixed it with coconut powder and then froze it, and they were like, 
I present to you chocolate. <laughs> I'd kill them. I'd strangle them to death with my own two hands. The other thing that I'm thinking of is any kind of like meat, you know, like, oh, we got some pork tenderloin, but it's cauliflower instead of, and I know that there's like impossible burgers and all that stuff, but I'm not talking about like something that's been made in a lab to resemble meat. I just mean like pure cauliflower. It's We're just like... <laughs> cauliflower. You know, I feel bad for cauliflower. Because cauliflower is delicious when it's not trying to be someone else. Okay. You know? (laughs) It's got an identity crisis. Like, I had some crispy Korean chili cauliflower at a restaurant a while ago, and it was incredible. It was so good. Or, like, I actually really like pureed cauliflower with, like, a bunch of garlic in it and stuff. But you can't tell me cauliflower is rice (laughs) you can't i won't accept that rice is rice what was it that you had that was like it tastes just like cheese and you're like no it doesn't you're a liar nutritional yeast oh nutritional yeast is it like a dairy-free replacement yeah yeah apparently a lot of vegans refer to it as nooch which is a really funny name for Mm. it but everybody on the internet was like yeah if you're looking for a dairy-free substitute for cheese, nutritional yeast tastes just like that. And I would say it tastes like cheese in the same way that an old sock tastes like cheese. Okay, or like a LaCroix tastes like anything. (laughs) Ha ha. It's it's kind of funky. It's got some stuff going on. It's not cheese. Gotcha. Like, I know the vegans are out there grinding it up with wet uh, cashews and saying that they're making a mac and cheese sauce. But besties, you are just making (laughs) yeasty cashew sauce. And I need you to embrace that. I really thought you were going to say they're grinding it together with like cocaine or something. (laughs) And I was just like, okay, yeah, let's get this party going. Now, I, okay, so I was born diabetic, not I mean, I guess I was born with the propensity for it, but I got diagnosed with diabetes at like five. So it's just a fact of life. I I don't remember life without it. But then in high school, uh, I was told that I am gluten intolerant, not uh It doesn't matter. It makes me sick to eat it, right? And so I had to cut that out. And it was really miserable because I really like a lot of the carby gluten things. Uh, And so uh, that was kind of a blow. But then I made the joke. I was like, if I ever get told that I'm lactose intolerant, I'm going to put myself in a coma and you can wake me up when there's a cure. Because they're like, I, what else can I, you know, can't eat sweets, can't eat uh, like pastas and stuff. And now if I were to be diagnosed, I wouldn't be able to eat like cheese or ice cream. Like there's nothing left but like potatoes, which are good, but they can't carry an entire life. Absolutely. So when I did eventually realize, oh, I kind of am lactose intolerant. I still basically cheat and I eat almost as much as I want. Sometimes I take it a little easy. But my point is, is I think that vegetarians and vegans might be in denial. Like they know that they're lacking some of the deliciousness that humanity has cooked up over hundreds of years and they haven't yet perfected the replacements. So I think maybe they're just like, I think they're lying to themselves when they say, this tastes just like cheese. Yeah. Do you better cry themselves to sleep every night? Well, I'm like, I could probably be vegan, and I've thought about it. My thing is that I like foods to be themselves, Mm. you know? So, like, I will make an amazing vegetable stir-fry. I will make roasted vegetables. I will make sweet potatoes. But I'm not going to try to recreate a steak, Mm. you know? Like, if I were to go vegan, I would just simply not have steak. And sometimes I would think fondly, Remember those times I used to have steak and then I would go, yes, yes, but we eat a cauliflower now. We eat a single (laughs) cauliflower as a treat. (laughs) But not as a pizza. (laughs) And that has been your do-do-do-do-do mic test? Mic test! (laughs) Mic test! You fool, if you drink that Diet Coke now, your heart will be rendered into darkness. (laughs) I can't choose between the podcast and Diet Coke, so I'll rip my heart out and create two halves. One's the goblin that just slurps Diet Coke, and the other one's the very serious, studious businessman who makes sure that everything is uploaded on time. I finally have something to put in bloopers and extras other than the freaking mic test. Nice. I'm here for it. I'm here for, like, these scrunkly little, like, you know, you can see their butt crack because their pants are, like, because, you know, I just, I like it. I like the design (laughs) of these You stumbled after butt crack, and that makes what you said kind of weird. Okay. Oh, that actually, okay. Squiggles are happening. Yeah, welcome to the mic test. Now, Joel, last week we had a mic test, 
We and did. The the results of that mic test led to you threatening our listeners in the actual podcast. Yes. The the dimensional barriers are deteriorating. Right. So I'm afraid that if we do anything too serious for this mic test, that'll happen again. I'll threaten the listeners. That's you like will. my that's my MO. You'll at this show point. up in their closet and hiss at them when they try to get socks. They need socks, Joel. It's winter. Their toes will get cold. <laughs> Absolutely, of course. Why didn't I think of that? So, uh, what's what's a lighthearted little mic test doobly do? Uh, uh, Sing me a song about a frog who is the champion. No. Oh, uh, come on! You're so good at making up little songs. I don't know how. To, I can't. I'm not going to do that on the podcast. It's embarrassing. No, it's having a podcast is embarrassing. If you can do that, you can do anything. Oh my gosh! Uh, a frog who's the champion? Yeah. Um. There once was a frog whose name was Fredrickson. Fredrickson. Fredrickson had a heart of gold, heart of gold. But unfortunately, he was born with a congenital disease. No! So that he was unable to hop, hop. Hop, hop, hop. <laughs> then one day, the time-traveling Santa came from the future and said, Fredrickson, with your heart of gold, I shall give you the power to jump. There you go. And then he <laughs> became the champion beautiful. of jumping. <laughs> the high note you hit when gold turned into ho 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 scared the dog. Did it really? Yeah, it she wasn't... looked at you with like giant eyeballs. <laughs> and that's been your mic test. I guess it has been. Good night, everyone. Boop, 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 boop. This is all gonna get cut. This is all gonna get cut. Do 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 boop boo do do boo do boo. Do 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 boo boo do boo do boo. <laughs> Hang on, wait, where's the... Okay, it's under stories, probably. From ne- I don't care. Where's the episode guide? And with Ira, you could say he had that moment with Rekka. But Rekka. Rekka? Rekka, Rekka, Rekka? Rekka, Rekka, hi, Rekka, honey, honey, ho. <laughs> with Rekka. Rekka's our character. <laughs> Hello, uh, Mike Test people. Uh, you might have heard that. I don't know. I don't think editing Joel will keep it in. But as I was putting a finger to my lips to say, let's all be quiet and record the five seconds of silence that Audacity needs in order to do some magical processing, Catherine just blurted out, why am I like that? In my defense, I was looking at Cure Star. Okay. When I when I said that. Oh, so you weren't. Okay. Cure Star wasn't giving you the, the yeah. universal gesture of I didn't see, <laughs> no I didn't talking, see please. The, the be quiet. <laughs> Sometimes I say out loud, okay, I'm taking silence. This time I did not. The welcome to the final mic test of season, season two. two of Cure of the Witness. What? No, yum. The one ship. No, we're not doing we're that not yet. Doing it's that. not nope. the episode. Mm. However, Joel, every sh- piece of media we engage with, we carry something forward with us okay so how have the delicious party girls inspired you to love food more what lessons will you take from yui moving into the future um uh uh (laughs) he looked at his watch i think that was a joke about how long it'll take him to respond that was a i got a notification from what i thought was duolingo and it was duolingo i guess i don't know because like in in the end you didn't really do much related to food you know like she enjoys food but she's never (sighs) that's never really challenged within the show and more of it is like processing her grief related to yone or like finding a way to bring people together so I guess going forward, I just need to remember that when people cook things that they probably made it out of a sense of love and I should try to communicate with them that I'm thankful. Yeah, they're they're passing on their feelings and you can communicate your feelings to, you know, anyone you might love, anyone who might enjoy a delicious iced cream cake. Mm. What kind of food would you serve if your emotional state is just internal screaming? Enchiladas, maybe? <laughs> These are the screaming enchiladas. Don't cut into them. Just eat them whole. I've cooked enchiladas that scream. <laughs> Why? <laughs> 
Well, I think unless I cut it out, people probably heard my big yawn. So I think we're ready to close up the mic test and move on to the main episode. Yeah, let's get them, bitches. Is is Pam Pam the bitches that we're going to be getting? <laughs> it's up to your imagination. Mm. We're ready to go. Yep. Oh, as in we're recording. <clears throat> Stop clicking. I need absolute silence for my intro. Absolute. Good. That's right. And I'm your co-host, Joel, and also... Eliminate all adults! Eliminate all adults! Oh, jeez, that's us, though. Uh, is it? I'm a kid at heart. No. Like, in a hypothetical world, let's say that the people who write the 20... 20... uh, 20... The award for cutest delicious party couple slash polycule goes to... Yui and Takami! I'm not... Who got 50% of the votes. No? No? No, Secretaro and... (laughs) Sorry? (laughs) 